Now, word on the street is that things are really hitting a fan for the dude. Now, it's starting to look like he might be in some serious trouble. But guess what? There's people who saw it coming before the raid. Now, these are the times rappers warned us about Diddy. Who gonna turn down 50 million? Now, I've had to turn down 50 million dollars four times just to protect my integrity and that virgin hole I was telling you about. <laughs> right, uh, cause P Diddy be wanting to party. And you gotta tell him no. Oh, you Lord. got to tell him no. I, I did. I did. Motherfuckers be gay in Hollywood, you never fucking expected. They be having these big ass mansion parties, and the mansion party, the whole mansion is a party, and then it's a separate party in the little rooms. I ain't been famous that goddamn long. I'm excited in a motherfucker to be at the mansion party. You be looking in all the goddamn rooms, and you fuck around and look in the wrong room. Nick, come here. Why you think I speak with such clarity? I'm actually involved in each one of these stories I told you about. Now, 50 Cent didn't really take that offer kindly to Diddy's offer. Now, I don't think he got the memo. See, Curtis Jackson ain't somebody you really want to make an enemy out of. And while he was promoting his movie, Den of Thieves, he named dropped Diddy again. He says things, he doesn't even know what he's saying is like fruity. Oh, yeah. going off. When Ensign people gone. say that to me, I get a little uncomfortable. <laughs> I get uncomfortable. Like he said, he said something to me one time, a long time ago, oh, at Chris Lighty's wedding. He told me he'd take me shopping. I looked at him like, what the, what the, what'd you just say? <laughs> Let yeah. me move, man, before I do something. You're going to make me mess up the wedding. Oh, that's oh, a nice gesture. Let's Let me get out of, no, dude, take me, that's still what a guy oh, says to him. Nice. I have 50 about that. And he said you did the same thing to him. You asked him to take him shopping. Yeah, I thought he needed some clothes. <laughs> <laughs> what? I'm a nice guy. Is Sean approved from the world of entertainment? There's only one person. Oh, go on. And I call him Sean. That's Jay-Z. We call each other Sean. Okay. Yeah, yeah. Nobody else could call me Sean. He's and the no, only person who's Sean single, approved. There's not a single person. That, that outside should be, of family, that should be no outside of my mother. Okay, just that should be calling me. This shows how close he is with fellow rapper Jay Z, and Ice Cube's gotten into the mix too by stirring the pot. Now he believes Jay Z and Beyonce are trying to cover up for Diddy. Now what could they be covering up and trying to hide? Uh -oh. Oh, man. He's smarter. He's patient. He's not sloppy. This pussy been lining up people he calls friends and stepping to the side while they get hit by the guillotine for 30, 30 years. Club, a lot of you listening to me right here, right now, you're not part of the club either. What club am I talking about? I'm talking about the club of gatekeepers that we all got to deal with. You know who they are, and they definitely know who they are. Ever since I put out the contract with Black America, you know they've been fucking with me. The NBA been fucking with us. A lot of people might say like, well, but Cube, you want to work with the NBA? Really, I don't give a fuck about working with the NBA. When I say work with us, is to stop working against us. Stop doing that bullshit behind the scenes that we know you're doing. Mainstream media, you know, they ain't fucking with us. And that's cool, we can do it ourselves. What am I gonna do to deal with these motherfuckers? gatekeepers what i'm gonna do is go on a Fuck the gatekeepers podcast tour the important thing is you know for me to go on these platforms say what i feel about what i think some people may get pissed off because i'm going to talk to everybody i'm not playing it's gonna be a crazy summer it's gonna be fun so martin curry wrote a hell of a book now, he's been called all sorts of names before the Cassie lawsuit blew the entire operation wide open. Speaking of Kim Porter, because you knew Kim Porter, is it true that Diddy broke her nose? Bust her nose, man. You know, but it was all, you know, uh, insecurities. Anytime a man would go out his way, to wiretap someone's phone or, or put taps in their homes just to monitor their conversation, that's a sign of insanity. So when you see someone doing that, you can't, you can't, you can, you can, you can imagine everything else they do. What do you think he's gonna do if he found 
um, her on the phone talking to someone and, and uh, or feels that he, she's cheating on him or somebody sleeping with his girl, what you think he's going to say? Ooh, I caught you. Ooh, I heard this. Now nah, he's going to come in with the, you know, it's going to be a fight. But that's something that you've seen from the inside. When you're on the inside looking out, it's like looking at Blueface and his girlfriend always arguing on TV. They toxic relationship. So when you're on the inside looking out, you don't really see them like fighting. You just be like, they tripping. They have a, this is their relationship. It's been going on like that with them for years. So usually when you notice know Puff was in those kind of violent relationships with his females, they was, they, this been going on ever since two, three years. This ain't just something that just happened. This ain't the first fight. It ain't the last fight. You know, yeah, I know this dog. I seen, I seen a lot. I seen him walking with scratches and bruises on his face. And you'd be like, who scratched you up, dog? Who scratching you? What you had a fight with a cat? What's going on? You know? So he put his hands on females, put his hands on producers, executives. He that's you know, that's just his was his. I guess that's what the whole name bad boy comes from that people don't really understand. What is it? What is a bad boy? What makes. What oh, so guess who wasn't surprised that Diddy's house was raided? Michael J. White to warn us in his song titled The Industry. He also went on interview rounds. Now, the suspicion here is that anybody who tried to call out Diddy in the past is either six feet deep or dismissed as crazy. Uh, a lot of the love I had. For wanting to, you know, for wanting to be a part of the industry is not there anymore. I'm not, I'm not, I don't even associate myself with the industry. You know what I'm saying? I'm not an industry artist. I'm an artist in the industry. Uptown Records started with five people. Andre Harrell, I'll be sure, Heavy D, and Puffy, and Kim was the longest working employee because she was there from the very beginning. She was Andre's personal assistant. Mm -hmm. Kim is dead. Heavy D is dead. What's the Andre Harrell is dead. The only two left are Puffy and Al, and Al almost died. Isn't that interesting? That is interesting. Heavy D was found dead, face down in the heart attack. Andre Harrell, heart attack. Kim died from pneumonia, but there's the first coroner's report that said that she died. It, it was ruled a homicide and they found toxins in her body to prove that she had been poisoned. You know, they, they have poisons that create heart attack and pneumonia-like symptoms. and. Then right after that, Al had a meeting and I was going to meet up with him because we were in Vegas. And then the next thing you know, you want to know what they all had in common, though? The survivors and the, and, and the late of Uptown Records, they were all writing tell-all books. Mm -hmm. Andre was writing a book right before he died. Heavy D was working on a book before he died. Kim Porter was working on a book before she died. And I'll be sure was working on the documentary of his life. And then he goes into a coma. Has Puffy ever been in a coma? Has he, has anything happened to him? He must be the luckiest motherfucker because it seems like everybody that worked at Uptown Records from the very beginning. So gone. Just him. I guess Al disappointed you. You know, it's. I speak for a reason. When you see this bullshit ass motherfucking game fucking with people that you love, that you like, you know, that you. Cassie was once asked why she cut her hair and she said Diddy just liked it that way. Now, before the lawsuit showed the reason that she cut her hair, Jaguar Wright also spilled the tea on why Cassie would do such a thing. He has people followed. He has people watched. He does all kinds of fucking. He's a fucking piece of shit. Mm, too much money. I feel, I feel bad for the kids. Mm. 
Like, don't think that there are moments when I'm speaking honestly about that motherfucker that I pray that his children don't hear it. Because that's still their dad. I know what it's like to have a baby with a fucked up ass motherfucker. As much as I can't stand my ex-husband, I would never want my son to feel bad about either one of us being his parent. You know what I mean? Like, exactly. I would never want that. Exactly. But their father is the fucking devil. Mm. He the fucking devil. Hold that thought. Why do you think T.D. Jakes was at Puff Daddy's birthday party? <laughs> I, I mean, I, I just, I, I, you know, do you remember when Bernie Mac played the minister on Friday? Yes. That's how I feel about T.D. Jakes. Like, that's how I see, oh, Miss Parker, come to pray. I, but I for him to be at a Diddy party, I don't know. Like, I, I feel the same way about that as I feel about when Tyler Perry came to his church and laid hands on him and he caught the Holy Spirit from Tyler Perry. Tyler Perry is the bishop of what? <laughs> like, I've never, like, and I cut a check for 100 and I'm going to lay my hands on your bishop. And he said, ah, ah. And then the bitch said, it's on the fucking internet. He's ah, he's doing all of this, right? And then there's a woman on, on, the, on the dais screaming, push the baby out. Birth that baby. Push the... I'm like, what? are we at church? Or is this about to turn into like a whole nother scene, like a lost scene from Eyes Wide? With all these unravelings of Diddy's secrets, Gene Deal believes that Diddy can't see himself in prison. The dude might end up taking his own life. You know what I'm saying? Um, when we was with the same gang and uh, Mike Owens, a.k.a. Mike Cock, everybody could tell him, D. Ferg did a collection for him because he didn't know how he was going to pay his rent and he didn't know how he was going to uh, 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 pay his rent, uh, child support, and his car note because he had one of those uh, drop-top Cabarets Volkswagen shit. So Mike gave 5000 I wasn't giving him nothing. I'm just telling you right now. D, D was just collecting money for niggas. You know what I'm saying? Yo, man, we got to make sure because he want to kill himself. He going to kill himself. Did he had that pace and he had that look in his face that he know something may be wrong or they may have something on him. Because they took things out of there. We may not have seen what they took, but they had bags and boxes of stuff that they took out of there. So he knows. He's getting a play-by-play -play of what's going on. And even back then, doing that city college, when he, was, when he was fired from Uptown Records, he was making statements about doing this stuff. He had that same look in his face. Yeah, he looked worried, man. I'm not going to lie for a split second, man. I felt bad for him for a split second, but yeah. Like, everybody, I get all kind of hate mail, IGs, talking about that I'm trying to take a black man down. No, 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 no. I went through every step you supposed to go through when you got a problem, you got a situation, you got an issue with a man. You understand? I get in contact with them. Tried went mutual friends. Let's sit down and talk. What you did to Wolf mother wasn't right, bro. You don't talk to her like that. If Wolf was alive, he'd take your head off. You understand? Try to talk to him. People, when they start getting in this power, certain certain positions, have a certain amount of money. They don't look back. Some of them don't look back and don't think they have to come back to the people that help them get to those positions. You understand? I don't care what nobody say. You understand? If somebody helps you and use their ability and their talents to help you get in position and get to certain places and do certain things, 
you come back and you make sure things is all right. You don't disrespect people, mothers. You don't disrespect your friends that took their money to make sure you was all right when you was wrong, when you was messed up. You don't do that, brother. So by him doing the things that he did and taking the avenue that he took, he's suffering the consequences and I don't feel bad for him at all. Because people was trying to talk to him. People was trying to tell him. You couldn't pull him by the coat and let him know anything. You understand? They messed up the game, brother. When he put that shit out with them, money, power, respect, it ain't never been like that. It ain't never been like that. You got your respect in the street that gave you your power, that brought you your money. Totally different thing. He let that money, power, and respect go to his head, but he had it ass backwards. So I do I do I do I care what happened? Nah. He got enough, he got enough money to buy his way out of this. So we think. So when you look at that video of him pacing around and he's looking worried, and you knowing him, do you think it's possible that he might commit suicide? When you are a narcissist, there's always a possibility because you're suffering. But I don't think that he can see himself in a cage. I don't think he can see himself behind those bars in those type of situations. It's too many real dudes that dislike him. But then again, there's a lot of real dudes that need help. And him being buying bars, <laughs> he could probably help them. <laughs>